I can be arrested for if you want. Don't put your hands in my face. I can be arrested Don't if you want. Never put your hand in a police officer's face. I'll tell you why in a minute. You may have seen this clip where a Christian brother was preaching in England and was arrested by the police. What's your face? You put your hand you in my better, face. You, bet, you, better, right. you better even make your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. What are you doing here? I am preaching. You are preaching. I'm going to require you to go away. You can never. Okay, then I will arrest you for a breach of peace. Plain and simple. My what friend. breach of peace? It's what you're doing at the moment. You're causing problems, you're disturbing people's days, and you're breaching their peace. Okay, so for, me, for that to be dealt with, if you won't go away voluntarily, we will have to arrest I you. I will not go away because I need to tell them the truth. Because Jesus is the only way. The truth. Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. I appreciate and that. Nobody. I appreciate that, but nobody wants to listen to that. They want you to go away. Oh, you don't they have don't to listen to that. You will listen when you are dead. You will listen when you are dead. You will listen. Take me, take me. No, 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 no. Don't, don't take my Bible away. Don't take my Bible away. Don't take my Bible. Bible. Gave you the simple option. Don't Thank take you. my Bible away. We're not, no, we're not taking it away. Before that, sir. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Whatever you like, you can even do. Whatever you like. Where do you park? Huh? We're not parked anywhere. We're going to go for a walk. Thank you. Now, firstly, let me say. God bless this faithful brother for sharing the gospel. I admire his courage, and what happened reminded me of my open air preaching back in New Zealand. I've been preaching open air for probably about 45 years, and back in New Zealand I did so almost every day for 12 years, and I don't think I was ever harassed by the police. In fact, the opposite was the case. The chief superintendent of our city was a Christian, and day after day for many years he would sit during the lunch hour and listen to the preaching. So that was wonderful. When I came to the US, I did get stopped by a police officer when I was preaching on the beach at Waikiki. I was very respectful of the people. I said, oh, folks, it's a dream for you to come to famous Waikiki and bask in the sun and, and the surf. And it must be a nightmare to have a preacher stand up and preach to you. But I trust you'll be patient with me and just let me share for a few moments. And after about 10 minutes, a police officer approached me and he said, hey, I've uh, had eight complaints. I thought I'd better ask you to wind down. I guess the guy was a Christian. Now, first thing I noticed about the US is the police officers had a gun. That was different in New Zealand. Police officers in those times didn't carry guns. And so it set me on the right foot to show respect for the police because I really didn't want to be killed or thrown in prison. So if you're ever approached in the US by a police officer when you're open air preaching, uh, don't wave your hands in his face because he's been trained that it could be a distraction. Uh, you're going to stab him in the stomach as you wave your hand in his face. So he wants to get home to see his family. So just be very careful and don't preach at him. If you want to upset him, do that. But if you want to keep preaching and stay out of jail, just be swift to hear and slow to speak. Use a little discretion because the police officer is not the enemy. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So don't treat him like an enemy. And if you're respectful and say, sir, can I help you? Am I doing something wrong? Uh, I want to you know, do that, which is right. He may say, look, you're a very reasonable person. I don't see any problem here. Just carry on. That does happen. So when I'm approached by a police officer, if he says, uh, I want you to move on, I say, absolutely, sir. Where would you suggest I could keep speaking? Is there another area I could go to? And I've often had them say, oh, if you could just move down, say, 50 yards down there, uh, that would be much better. It would just stop people complaining. You see, many of these street preachers, and I'm not saying this guy is like this, but many of these street preachers aren't part of a local church. They see the police as the enemy and they treat them as such. And that's one of the reasons I don't like being called a street preacher. We gather a crowd and, and people are there of their own free will and they listen and they leave if they don't like it. So I hope this is helpful to those of you who uh, really want to obey the Great Commission and preach the gospel to every creature and to stay out of jail. Friends from England contacted me and said that the officer on the right who took the Bible from the preacher came to faith in Jesus and is now attending their church. They showed him the original video of the arrest that we posted back in 2019 and he left this comment. I am one of the officers in this video, one with hair. I was saved by Jesus Christ in September of 2023. Then he went on to say, 
that the Lord is merciful, forgiving and loving. He was a devout atheist at the time of the arrest and commuted to work with another officer who was a Christian. During the time of the commute, they often spoke of spiritual things. One day he visited his family in Florida and found that his brother-in-law had come to faith shortly before his visit. His brother-in-law then began to share his faith with him, and when he returned to England, he started asking his police officer friend more questions. He's now a believer and growing in his newfound faith. He said that when they arrested the street preacher, he knew that he hadn't really done anything wrong. He also said that they drove him about five miles away and essentially de-arrested him, which is good to hear. You may be interested in a new book we've published called 50 Years of Open Air Preaching, Everything I've Learned. And stay tuned now for the type of open air preaching of which I'm speaking, where people gather of their own free will. This video, which also went online back in 2019, is called She Laughs at First, Then the Preacher Said This. It has millions of views. I hope you enjoy it. I'm a good person. Okay, Jessica, jump up there. Let's go for it. <laughs> You ready? I'm nervous. I was going to say, are you nervous? Well, it's going to get worse, Jessica. Are okay, you ready? Yes. How many lies have you told in your life? A lot. A lot? Can you speak milk. up nice and loud so I can hear I would say over a hundred. Okay. Have you ever stolen something? Yes. So what do you call someone who steals things? A thief. So what are you? A thief. Oh, you're not. You're a lying thief. I'm a lying thief. <laughs> now, you I'm still think you're a good person. I'm a good person. You think a lying thief is a good person? No. So you're not a good person? That was me before. Uh, what, what are you now? I'm a good person. What happened? I changed. You changed? I grew. How long did it take you to change from being a thief to a non-thief? Maturity level. And how would you handle that in the court of law with a judge? A judge? I stole, but it was last week. I've changed. Doesn't work that way, Jessica. If you you're steal, right. you're always a thief. You're right. Now, have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. That's called blasphemy. Do you know why you do that? Do I know why I do that? Do you know why you do it? It's a slip up. Yeah, no, but why use God's name as a cuss word? Would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? Absolutely not. Well, why not? Because she's right there. <laughs> She'd beat you up. She and so it's wrong to use God's name as a cuss word. Agreed. Okay? Now, one to go. Jesus said if you look with lust, you commit adultery in the heart. Never okay. look with lust. Yes. Okay, Jessica, I'm not judging you. <laughs> Because I like you, I think you're a colorful person. But I gotta tell you It's the about truth. honesty, right? Yeah, it's your honesty. Okay, I'm not judging you. But you've just told me you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer of heart. And you have to face God on judgment day. Will you be innocent or guilty on judgment day if he judges you by the Ten Commandments? Uh innocent. Why? Because forgiveness. No! <laughs> You'll be guilty like the rest of us. Okay. okay? Okay. If you're guilty on judgment day, would you go to heaven or hell? Hell. Now, does that concern you? A little bit. It concerns me a big bit. I care about you. I don't want you to end up in hell. Me either. Now, do you know what God did for guilty sinners so they wouldn't have to go to hell? Forgiveness. No. He did something. Do you know what he did? I do not. You do, but you forgot. I forgot. 2,000 years ago, God became a human being, Jesus of Nazareth, who gave his life on the cross. Okay. And he did it to take the punishment for the sin of the world. You probably know that. And you may not know this aspect, and I appreciate you listening. Stay with me, okay? Okay, okay. Please. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. If you're in court and someone pays your fine, even though you're guilty, the judge can let you go. He can yeah. say, Jessica's guilty. Someone's paid a fine. She's out of here. Well, the good news of the gospel is God can let you go. He can dismiss your case, forgive your sins. Commute your death sentence, because that's what you're under at the moment. The Bible says the soul that sins it shall die, okay? I know you think this is funny. I don't. This is deadly serious, because you could die tonight. That's why I'm so earnest about this. Christ died for your sins, rose again on the third day, and if you repent and trust in Him, God will forgive your sins. At the moment, you're like a man on the edge of a plane, 10,000 feet up, and he's going to flap his arms to save himself. It's not going to work. He needs to trust the parachute. And at the moment, you say, I'm a good person. I'll be fine on judgment day. No, you won't. You're not good. You're like the rest of us. Trust in Jesus Christ alone. Transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior. I will. Does that make sense? It does. Do you have a Bible at home? Yes. Now, you're not laughing at me anymore. Is that because you're thinking seriously about this? Yes. I appreciate that. I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to give you a book. 
Jessica, thanks for listening to me. Can I give you a book? This tract is called Ticket to Heaven. It says if you don't need a ticket to heaven, tear this up if you can. And then it has places where you can put your thumbs so you can try and tear it up. But it's made of unterrible paper. And on the back, it has the gospel. You can get these at livingwaters.com. Am I trying to rip this? It, well, it says if you don't need the ticket to heaven, go ahead and rip it. Okay, so should we try to rip it? Can we rip it? <laughs> You don't need the ticket? Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Pretty awesome, huh? Oh! Wait, what is it? Wait, it why does like it hurt? Because you guys need it. Yeah, we need it. Wait, what does it say, Wow. Living Waters exists as a non-profit ministry to help you grow in your faith. Here are three things to help you do just that. The Living Waters Podcast the Evidence Study Bible, everything you've ever wanted to know about the Christian faith, and the Starter Kit, four of our most popular gospel tracks. These and much more are available at livingwaters.com. If you've not watched our video, Christian Stumps Jehovah's Witness with one question, I think you'll enjoy it. It's had well over a million views, and you can watch it right now by clicking on the top video.